Now, Round Ball Wrap on KEZI 9 News. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to Round Ball Wrap. Yes, this, that Round Ball Wrap, the world famous, <laughs> never lost. Andrew Hodder here with you <laughs> alongside Julian Middenstone. I think you can tell, Julian, I'm glad to be back. It's been my, my first round ball wrap of the year here, man. Yeah, it's glad to have you up here on the desk. I had a sub from last week to this I'm week. I'm jazzed. But we're, I'm, I'm loose. We're, we're getting ready to go. We're going to start do this. with some college basketball, actually. NAIA college basketball. And the game of the week, Northwest Eagles taking on the NCU Beacons. Hussein Ford gets the pass inside the paint and finishes with authority. Now two seconds left in the first half. Beacons with the ball. Tyus Hosley. Hosley actually drains it from the parking lot to close the first half and take a five-point lead, but the Eagles wouldn't go away. It's four, dishes it out to Josh Meyer. He drains a three-pointer NCU, drops a close one at home to Northwest University. So let's keep things in the college world. The NCU women's team took on Northwest a little earlier in the evening here in the Willamette Valley. Morgan McKinney is where we start, drives, gets her shot blocked, but if at first you don't succeed, you kick it out to Kaylin Bush. Why not? She buries the triple. Eagles, though, too much. Nice ball movement all the way around like the Warriors, the Spurs. You take your pick. Alex Fast lives up to her name, beats everyone to the hoop. Northwest top 10 to you, 65-56. Now on to some high school hoops. 6A girls South Eugene playing host to North Medford first quarter. Hannah Stein spotting up in the corner. And she hits the three, but the axe trail by one early on. Moments later, South Eugene in transition. Dora Schmidt Gets the easy layup from the pass from Abby Jost. And the Axe would go on to win this one, 43-31. A couple other scores from girls 6-8 Southwest Conference. Sheldon stays undefeated in conference play, beating Grants Pass 47-32. While Roseburg dropped their 10th straight game, falling to South Medford 88-36. Sheldon girls, they're good, man. They're good. Yep. Don't they play it. They show it on the court. South Eugene on the road against North Medford. South Eugene with it. Cole McCannage lowers his shoulder and charges to the bucket, finishes with the left. The Black Tornadoes are on the break, and it'll be Elias Spence. Check this next play out right here. Elias Spence, North Medford, hangs on to win 67-58. All right, over to Sheldon. The Fighting Irish looking for the sweep over Grants Pass for the season. Third quarter, Ben Gittins. Kicks out to Dawson, prickle corner pocket, drains the three, Sheldon up 19. Staying in the quarter, Gittins attacking again. Nice little behind the back, draws the contact, it doesn't matter, gets the lay in to fall. Fighting Irish roll, 73-47 over Grants Pass. One final score from the 6A Boys Southwest Conference. Roseburg drops their first conference game to Met South Medford. That final score, 62-46. Julian. Churchill looking to remain unbeaten in the league, taking on North Bend at home. Some pre-game dunks. And Cooper Lynn won't be dunking this one, but he finishes the bucket for the Bulldogs. We take this on the other, other, other end. It's Kaylin O'Neill. Check this out. With a pump fake, finishes in stride. The hoop and the harm. Lancers win this one by 30. Lancers, man, they're looking good. Them and Thurston next week. That's going to be a good one. We'll land it on the road against Ashland. Grizzlies on the attack where we pick this one up. Is anyone going to stop Anthony Smith? Well, my guess is no. He gets all the way to the 10 for two. Grizz in business, but on the other side, Owen Cross breaking down. Buries the three, the pull-up. Wolverines win big over Ashland, 68-37. Can't count out Will High either in 5A. Number six, Thurston hosting number three, Crater. This was a good one. Crater's got Nate Biddle, number 15, on ESPN's top 100 for the class of 2020. He can do things like this. Throws it down on Grant Stark, but Colts got the last laugh in this one. Dejan Alonzo drives, spin, twirls, whirls, and gets it to go. Thurston dominates at home 63-43. Let's get you updated on some boys' 5A scores. Springfield Millers pull off the 59-43 road win over the Eagle Point Eagles. Now out in girls 5A, Crater taking on Thurston. Now comments with the ball right here. They find Presley Robinson in the corner. She just does her thing right there. Drain to pull up jumper. Now, Crater leads early in the contest, but the Colts would put up a fight. Emily Bradley dishes it to Megan Miller, and she muscles her way through the defenders and puts it away for Thurston. But Thurston would fall short tonight, losing to Crater 48-27. Sticking with some girls' basketball, just like the boys' team, will land it on the road against Ashland in a little bit of early hoops. Grizzlies get this one to go right at the buzzer, but there wouldn't be many more Ashland highlights after that. This is the Willamette Valley after all. It was all Wolverines, all Will High. Beat them from the inside, beat them from the outside. Natalie Willoughby from three, and Willamette tops Ashland 59 to 46. 
And the Churchill girls, they'd be just as good as the Churchill boys. They get the 30-point win over North Bend. Springfield as well gets a big victory at home, 49-23 over the Eagle Point Eagles. Some scores in girls 5A. West Albany drops a home game against Silverton 58-39, but we have not received a score from Crescent Valley and North Salem just yet. And Corvallis drops one to Lebanon, 55-36. That was a very big win indeed. But we got some boys hoops too, Julian. Yep, in mid in the 5A Mid Willamette Conference, Lebanon taking the trip over to Corvallis to face a Spartans third quarter tight game. Clear lane, Cole Webster coming through. Gets around Jasper Ronaldo for the bucket, but Corvallis' seven foot three freshman had some things of his own to say. Namely, I can get buckets. <laughs> Corvallis wins this one 59-45. And a little bit up the road, Crescent Valley playing host to North Salem. Early in the first, Tamron Hampton pushing a little bit of pace, gives it off to Brayton Vasquez to pull up white between the eyes. This one would go down to the wire. Great plays on both sides. Ball movement all the way out to the corner. Seth King, like chicken soup, it's good for the soul. Crescent Valley wins a thriller, 56 to 55. Being kind of cold, chicken soup sounds pretty good right now. <laughs> 5A Midwell Lamet boys scores. West Albany could not match Silverton. Bulldogs fall big in that one. We've gone through 6A and 5A, but can't forget about 4A on down, man. No, they got some ballers at those schools, and we start with a league matchup. In 4A, Maris boys looking to remain undefeated in conference play, taking on Cottage Grove. First quarter, Ben Morehouse. Swings it to J.J. Anderson. He does the rest. He knocks down the tray ball. Spartans lead the Lions by 16 early, but Cottage Grove would make a game out of this one. Eric Vallejo, Giffen finesses in with the layup. Ramirez picks up the win, final 62-49. The Junction City boys take care of Sayusla, 54-39. Marshfield cruises past Elmira, 63-39. On the girls' side of things, Maris looking for the sweep over Cottage Grove tonight. We pick things up, third quarter. Spartans moving the ball. Well, Madison P. Second. Pulling the three, that is good. But the Lions lead by four. Later on in the quarter, Michaela Bloomquist driving, finds Gracie Arnold on the back door, cuts, she lays it up and in. Cottage Grove playing spoiler, they beat Spartans 52-47. Girls Skyrim scores, Junction City beats Sayuslaw, 65-27. Marshfield was too much for Elmira, 72-25. Oregon West Girls Conference scores. Sweet Home couldn't keep pace with Newport, and Philomath gets by Woodburn, 58-21. Boys scores, Sweet Home doesn't have enough to beat Newport here. Philomath falls short against Woodburn. All right, deja vu. The 3A Mountain Valley Boys Conference, Sandy Am Christian, still great, takes down the Pine, 59-45. Harrisburg comes up on the losing end to Pleasant Hill, 64-37. Girls 3A scores Santiam Christian loses its 10th game of the year, dropping a close one to Lapine. Harrisburg was outmatched by Pleasant Hill, 57-16. 3A girls Far West League Sutherland top St. Mary's Medford, 55-35. Brookings Harbor gets a 57-39 double for Cascade Christian. Far West League boys Sutherland also beats St. Mary's Medford here, 44-27. And Brookings Harbor drops a close one to Cascade Christian. Nailbiter, 57-56. All right, guys, take a deep breath up to my favorite new venue, the Cobra Dome. Home away from home indeed. Central Lynn taking on Lowell. Cobras jumped out to a 9-0 run, but the Devils would stop it. Jenna Martini, Lucy Plan, easy work inside. But the 9-0 run, it's indicative of how this game went. Sarah Connor, the Terminator, and the Cobras say, we don't want no Devils in the house. We want the load. Ultra light beams for Central Lynn, 49-19, your final. That's it. Other Central Valley <laughs> girls scores. Oakland makes quick work of East Lynn, 46-22. Monroe defeats Jefferson with ease in that one. And now Oak Ridge, no trouble with Regis. They can get by 48-14 with the win. Same league, boys scores a pair of overtime games here. Eastland defeats Oakland by four. Oak Ridge couldn't keep pace in OT. They fall 71-61. Monroe drops one to Jefferson, 68-59. Central Lynn too much for Lowell, 70-42. Sunset Conference boys, Bando loses big to Toledo, 98-45. Coquille beats Myrtle Point by 20. And Reedsport couldn't keep up with Gold Beach, 62-51 is your final there. Same conference, but the girls scores. Coquille 61, Myrtle point 32. Bandon gets handed a loss against Toledo 41 to 28. So now we come to our favorite part of the night, Ooh. the Abbey's legendary play of the week. And Julian, you're the photographer for this one, so I will just let you have it. Yeah, when I saw it, I texted you guys immediately. I was like, <laughs> guys, I think we got a play yeah. of the week. Check this out right here. Crater against Thurston. It's Nate Biddle, assistant coaches for Oregon in the house to see the 2021 top 15 recruit in the country, and guess what? You got that, a tomahawk slam. Let's give this another slow mo for emphasis. The poster. Oh Ooh. my goodness. Man, Thurston got the last laugh though. Yep, they got the win. 
Yep, and a lot of great plays from this week, but sometimes those great plays don't have to be dunks or buzzer beaters. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes they can be plays that make us smile, remind us about why we love what we do and why we love these games so much. One such play was sent to us by a viewer after our show last Friday, and it is just that. I mean, he's here every day. Every day. He yeah. shows up early and here till it ends every day. Sayuslaw senior Jordan Taniguchi is a Viking basketball mainstay. Uh, Jordan's been a part of this program for four years now as a senior and um, now on varsity. It's my last year playing and I just want to get better. Jordan suffers from cerebral palsy but has never let that stop him. My sophomore year, I was on JV, and he hit a three in the game. He even had somebody on him. That was pretty cool to watch. And last week against Marshfield, he got a chance for a varsity bucket. Uh, he got an opportunity, got a steal late in the game, took it down full court, and uh, made an awesome layup, and it was pretty awesome to see. It's about as good as it gets for a coach. Um, wins and all that stuff's great, but the relationships you make with the players uh, are what's most important. So what's his secret to success? Just do the little things one step at a time and then keep working on that over and over and then go to something else and work on it. Coming in to work each day to get better. A simple enough message, but even more powerful when said by the right messenger. And a great messenger, Jordan Taniguchi. As a special thank you to Jeff Gray for passing along that video. And if you have any clip of any type you'd like to nominate for the play of the week, could be any day that week, send it to us at sports at kezi.com or on Twitter at kezi9sports.